Sacramento, California, and he had a similar experience. Um, except that he was kind of on the shoulders of Dr. Brian Weiss and people like him, where past life regression was a normal thing for him. He would past life regress clients. And he's got a series of uh, books um, under the name Soul Journey, which are just fantastic. And all the Soul Journey book data is based off interviewing clients, not his own ideas, just asking people what's going on. Now, at someone's death, moment of death in a past life, he's like, okay, what happens next? And they went in between lives. They went to this, through, through this process where they met, um, their body was gone, and then they went and met their, who turned out, turned out to be their soul guide, and they went through a process where they met their soul family, which is almost like a morphogenic little family that sometimes incarnates together. You might have, let's say you've got a soul family of five people. And you might incarnate in these two people in the fire, they'll be son and daughter. They might be brother and sister, and then this time, you know, one time you might come back and this person will be your, your partner. And then you incarnate again, and this, this time you might be a man, and they might be a woman, then you'll swap. Or sometimes your soul guide will come in and help you out in your lifetime, or might pop up for a year and help you out. And this little group, you often incarnate together and do things together. And this often comes down to this, this memory and this knowing of this morphogenic group when you meet certain people in your life and you're like, mm. you ever met someone who you don't recognize, but you recognize, mm. and you haven't talked to them yet, you can just see them in your life. Mm. And then they recognize you, and then you just start going, oh my God, what's going on? You know, <laughs> but it's like, it's quite, it's quite euphoric, and it, it's extremely mysterious, but then you really want to hang out with them, but then you already know everything about them, but then you're like, oh, you know, it's, oh, it's amazing. And these things happen, this is, this is, this is real stuff. And um, so, he was like, well, this is nuts. He, he regressed a few people and he did this. And he's like, this is far out. So he really blocked himself off from all other information and research and just had clients and just went into this area and studied and studied. You call this clinical research. He's got a clinic and he's just researching, researching, researching through the scientific method to create, create a, basically a picture. And then he wrote his books. So a lot of people have the same sort of experience with the soul guide, soul family. And the really interesting thing that happens and if, you, if you're interested about this, read the books, or there's a good summary in David Wilcox's books as well, of his work. Is that you spend time with the soul group, and you start to choose how you're going to reincarnate. So whatever issues you've got for yourself in your past lives, let's say you were really nasty to your wife. And your soul god might be like, well, why don't you reincarnate? And um, Dave over there, he's going to be your wife in your next life. It can be called Cassandra, and you're going to reincarnate together. Do you want to come, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I'll come. And you're going to reincarnate, and but Dave's going to be real sick, and you're going to get married, and you're going to take care of him for 20 years, and that's going to help alleviate the karma of the past life where you're really nasty to your other wife. Do you want to do that? Is, that? is that a good thing you want to do? Because once that's clear, then on your next incarnation, we can go to higher octave levels of consciousness. And the interesting thing about this is in that in between world, in between lives. They have different colours and they kind of evolve to higher and higher colours to kind of represent the awareness and then you can evolve to being soul guides and this sort of thing. It's really far out stuff. And again, this is this is this is what we call spiritual verification. This is people's experiences, but then it's using a scientific method to draw a conclusion. So when you look at how in that in-between life state we are choosing the negative things to happen to us, we get into this whole other realm of responsibility where when something happens to us in this lifetime, and we're like, oh, why did that happen? We go into this victimization of what someone's done to us. But then we can orientate ourselves in such a sense that we chose it to learn something and then to let it go so that we don't have to repeat it. And that's pretty cool. When something really bad happens, you go, whoa, okay, I set this up. What have I got to learn from it? And then you've got to let it go. If you don't let it go, if, if, you, if you, could, you might choose things that are too hard for you, and you might self-abort, have to go back to your soul guide and go, yeah, it was too hard to kill myself. You're like, well, you have to do it again. You're like, oh, shit. Okay. You know, so it's, it's like that. 
It's like that. And the other really interesting thing that happens, and this is this gets really far up, is um, once you reach higher levels of consciousness in between lives, you start to learn how to make molecules. You start to learn how to make atoms. You start to learn how to make microbacteria. You start to learn how to make plants. The more highly evolved you get in between lives, the more you, more complex creatures you start to learn how to create. Rudolf Steiner said that the first thing to come to the planet was human consciousness. And this human consciousness started to change the planet and map the planet so that that human consciousness could incarnate into human bodies. Now that's backed up by what Michael Newton's saying, is that basically that human consciousness creates the universe, creates the solar system, creates the world, so that we can incarnate our consciousness to heal in having these human experiences. So that's pretty far out, you know, and it's, 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 um, that's backed up by biocentrism as well, and that's the idea in quantum physics that human consciousness becomes before all physical matter. Because all physical matter is existing in a waveform of possibilities before human consciousness, or consciousness, however you want to say that, we can take the word human out, um, interacts with it. So it's like this whole idea that in between lives we're actually creating um, realities where we can come into bodies.